Prophet said, Allah pardoned him and he was made to enter into Jannah. So this is the merit. This is the excellence of the feeling of fear of Allah. Allahumma aati nafsi taqwaha. Allahumma aati nafsi taqwaha. The companions, the companions of the Prophet feared Allah like anything. The mother of believers of the Daisha radiallahu ta'ala and her used to say, I wish I was a tiny bird. For the fear of accountability were these words said. Hazrat Abu Bakr, Hazrat Abu Bakr Siddiq radiallahu ta'ala anhu used to say, I wish I wish I was the blade of a grass which had just dried and the winds had blown it away. Hazrat Usman radiallahu ta'ala anhu, he used to cry, cry for the fear of hell, for the fear of the day of resurrection, for the fear of the life higher after, for the fear of Allah. That his beard become, used to become wet. Hazrat Abu Zar Ghaffari radiallahu ta'ala anhu, one of the sabikun, he used to say, I wish I was a tree which was just cut down and which was just finished off. Hazrat Abu Huraira radiallahu ta'ala anhu, who has reported, who has narrated the greatest number of ahadiths. His time of death, he was crying. And people asked, are you crying for the shock of leaving this world? He said, no, I'm crying because of the realization that my that the journey is long and the provisions are very little. Allahu Akbar. Allahu Akbar. Hasan Abu Huraira is saying that his provisions for the journey, for the long journey were very little. What provisions have we gathered, my sisters, my daughters? He said the journey this was the journey of hereafter which, for which he was crying. The journey is long and the provisions are little. And he said, I have reached a point ahead of which is either hell or paradise. And I know, I do not know which will be my abode. Hazrat Abu Huraira didn't know what will be his abode. How do we know? How are we so content? How are we so involved in this world? How are we not fearing Allah? How are we not preparing for hereafter? Hazrat Umar radiallahu ta'ala and who used to cry. He used to cry the whole night. He used to cry out of the fear of hereafter, out of the fear of the long journey, out of the fear of his provisions being less. He used to cry and because of the continual crying, the continual flowing of tears, there were marks, there were, there were streaks on his face. And he used to say, I wish my mother, my mother never gave birth to me. The taqwa of Umar radiallahu ta'ala and who? So many occasions in his life we see his taqwa. When he became the caliph, he used to cry at the nights. He used to cry through the night. And he used to cry for the fear of accountability. And he used to say, Oh Umar, Oh Umar, that even if a dog dies out of hunger or thirst on the bank of Tigris, then you will be held accountable on the day of judgment. It was this fear of Allah. It was this fear of accountability which did not let him sleep at night. He being the caliph, he used to disguise himself and he used to go about in the streets of the cities. One night, he heard some children cry. He knocked at the door. A lady came out. He asked him, why are the children crying? The lady said, we are poor. We don't have any provisions. We don't have any food to eat today and the children are hungry and that is why they're crying. And then she said, what? 
she said may umar be ill fated obviously she had not recognized the caliph may umar be ill fated he does not help us he does not support us he does not provide provisions for us he immediately tried to cover himself justify himself and he said oh sister he might not be aware of your conditions she immediately said may umar be ill fated then why doesn't he try to find out about our conditions that was enough for us at umar he started trembling with fear of allah he started trembling with the fear of accountability he cried all the way back to baitul mal he took out a bag of flour and he he carried it on his shoulders and when the when the slave asked and requested him to let me carry all this weight he said oh my brother you will share my weight you will share my load in this world who will share my load here after he came back to the lady he helped her prepare the meal he fed the children and then only could he sleep over the night how are we sleeping through the night days in and days out with so many people in our neighborhood with so many children in our neighborhood knowing that on the day of judgment allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will be asking his bondsmen i was hungry why didn't you feed me and the bondsman will say oh allah you are the sustainer you are the provider how could we feed you and allah azza wa jal will say such and such bondsman of mine was hungry begged you for food asked you for food out of hunger and you did not provide you did not feed him in hunger had you fed him you would have found him with me you would have found me with him what are we doing what are we standing what are we bothered about we just bothered about our eat as much you as you can we are just worrying about what we need to cook and what we need to eat the latest and the changing dishes on our counters in other occasion hazrat umar radhiyallahu ta'ala anhu was again in the streets at night and he heard a baby crying he knocked again a lady came out he asked why is the baby crying and the woman said that the caliph is announced she again had not recognized his atumar the caliph is announced that when a mother stops lactating or nursing her baby then they will be provided scholarship as provision for the baby so we are poor and we are needy and so desirous of availing this state scholarship for my baby i have stopped nursing or lactating my baby from today and he is crying out of hunger because obviously the mother was not feeding the baby hazrat umar radhiyallahu ta'ala and who he was shell shock he was stunned and he was so upset that he came back and he spent the whole night crying what was he saying he said umar Oh Umar it was because of your faulty decision and your faulty announcement that you know not of how many how many babies might have been deprived tonight of their due right of being nursed by their mothers you and your announcement of this scholarship might have been the cause of depriving the babies of their right of being lactated or nursed in the morning he got up he made an amendment he made an amendment to the law and he announced that from now onwards the state will be giving monetary help to all the babies from the day they were born this was the fear of allah my decisions my decisions might not be a source of trouble or a source of issues to somebody 
the sense of accountability to face Allah. This was the fear of Allah. And remember those who fear Allah, they love those who fear Allah. Those who are pious, they honor those who are pious. There was another night. Hazrat Umar radiallahu ta'ala who was again in the streets out till dawn, till the time of milking of cows, and he passed by a house. The family used, they had cows and they used to sell milk and that was a source of earning for them. And he just overheard the conversation between the mother and the daughter. The mother was asking the daughter and instructing the daughter to add some water to the milk, expecting that obviously they will raise more money with this adulteration. But you know what the daughter said? The daughter said, Mom, don't you know that the caliph has announced that the person who does adulteration will be strictly punished or will be severely punished? The mom said, Okay, how, how do you know? The caliph doesn't know what we are doing and the caliph is not seeing or hearing us. Okay, go ahead, do what I'm telling you to. The daughter said, Mom, the caliph is not seeing, the caliph is not hearing, the caliph doesn't know, but the caliph's Allah is all knowing, is all seeing, is all hearing, he knows. So you see, this is piety and this is taqwa and this is the fear of Allah that a person is sensitive. The person realizes that Allah is seeing, Allah is hearing and Allah is all knowing. He knows what I am doing. He knows what I am talking. He knows what I am saying is taqwa. He who is the master of the day of resurrection, the day of judgment, he who will be taking the accountability, he knows this exactly is taqwa. Children are generally closer to nature and they respond faster to the calls and to the messages of Islam. I clearly remember that story that there was a father and a son who were going and they came across a mango tree and all the mangoes were big and ripe and yellow and they were very tempting and the father asked the son to stay behind and stand close to the stem or underneath the tree and be on the watch out and be on the lookout and then he said that okay you stand here and I will I will climb the tree and I will bring a few ripe mangoes for both of us to eat and he climbed the tree and he was at the top and he was just going to pluck a mango that the, that the sun beneath the tree he started shouting out he's looking he's seeing he's seeing and he immediately came down and he looked around and he said who who is there there's nobody here nobody's seeing he said Allah is looking at us Allah is seeing all this so this is taqwa and you know Hazrat Umar ta'ala and who when he heard the talk and the conversation and what he realized the fear of God in this in this daughter of that lady he asked his slave to mark this house and to remember the house and in the morning he came and he called his sons and he asked them whether any one of them wanted to get married Hazrat Salim bin Umar ta'ala and who his wife had recently um, passed away and he said that I am desirous of getting married and Prof and Hazrat Umar ta'ala and who being the caliph of such a big Islamic state the caliph of such a huge Islamic state sent proposal asked for the hands of whom for his son for whom for such a poor family, it was not the riches, it was not the social standard which was important, but it was the taqwa which was important for them. And you know what? This lady, when she was wedded with the son of Hazrat Umar ta'ala, who she then later on became the grandmother, her great grandson was Umar bin Abdulaziz. 
the pious, the God-fearing Umar bin Abdul Aziz, whose period was the golden era of the Umayyad dynasty. And how he was pious and how he was God-fearing in his blood vessels was the blood of Hazrat Umar. And he was the progeny of this pious grandmother. The pious Umar bin Abdul Aziz was so God-fearing that he used to work and he used to study late night. And when he used to do his office work or his official work, he used to use the lamp, the official lamp. And when his official work used to finish and he used to do his personal reading or some personal work, then he used to blow off this official lamp in which the oil was at the state expenses, you know. He used to blow off this official lamp and then he used to light his own personal lamp. This was what? There was, this was the fear of accountability, lest he may use the trust of the state for his personal purposes. This was all out of the fear of Allah. He was sitting in his courtyard one day and the state guest house was very adjacent to his house. In fact, the state guest house was a neighboring house. And he was sitting in his courtyard and he saw that one of his maids was coming from the state guest house and she had a cup in her hand. He immediately inquired that what is this cup about and what is in it? And the maid said that there was, she had taken some milk from the state guest house and the milk she was taking was to let his wife take a medicine because his wife was pregnant and uh, she was having a threat of aborting the pregnancy and the medical personnel had advised her to take a medicine with a cup of milk. So since there was no milk at home, the maid to give his wife to save her pregnancy from aborting was taking the milk from the state guest house. Furious did he stop the maid, asked her to go back and return the milk. And then he said, I would prefer, I would prefer this pregnancy being aborted rather than my wife giving birth to a baby whose flesh and whose body was raised consuming the unlawful or the forbidden food or milk. This sensitivity for the lawful earning, for the trust, was because of the fear of Allah. This was the fear of Allah, of the companions, of the Tabaeen, of the Taba Tabaeen, which would definitely raise their ranks in the sight of Allah on the Day of Judgment.